Connie, just stop and think for a second. You know me. I wouldn't hurt anyone, let alone Hazel. Then where is she? Why would you tell Papyrus as you killed her? Think about who we're dealing with. I couldn't tell him the truth. And what is the truth? Pray tell. Connie, she's safe. Can you promise that? Really, truly promise? No. Only because I'm not with her right now. I sent her somewhere safe, and she's not alone. I'm just not going to promise you anything I can't be sure of. Just tell me where she is! What about Papyrus? Do you want him to know where she is? Of course not! And you're gonna have to trust me. All those times you watched my back out there. Don't you think I'd do the same for you? I... He's lying. Your sister's dust is still fresh on his paws. And still he lies to your face. She's looking for someone. You know who, don't you, Connie? Someone who was sent away before all this. Of course. It was safer for her, and it was the right thing to do. I just don't know what happened to her after that. I understand. Thank you. Boring. I bring you here, to the most dramatic stage I have, and you make peace? Ugh. So are you gonna let us down? Of course not. Not until there's only one of you left standing. And admittedly, I'll probably kill them too. So that's just it for us? I'm afraid so. Sans, check the fulcrum from all sides. I don't want the whole thing to collapse the way it did last time. It was dreadfully disappointing. Yeah, I'm sure that was a real kick in the teeth. But then that's probably just because you don't have lips. <laughs> that's quite enough of that. Puns. What was that? N nothing. At least if you're gonna kill us, you're making no bones about it. Stop that! <laughs> the puns are the lowest form of humor. Only slack-jawed idiots like Sans find them funny. Well, Sans may be a slack-jawed idiot, but from the way your mandible's moving, I think you're finding my puns pretty enjoyable. <laughs> Detest, I say. What do you think you're doing, Corey? Trying to save our lives. What are you whispering about up there? Plotting against me, eh? Plotting? No. We're not even in a cemetery. <laughs> plotting? Like a burial plot? Oh dear me. <clears throat> Still not funny. Your jokes offend the great and mighty Papyrus. And for that you shall all pay with your life. Honestly though, I'm really surprised you live here in Snowden. That cold wind is pretty bone chilling. Bone chilling? <laughs> Guess I'm really not tickling your funny bone, huh? <laughs> funny bone. <laughs> no! No! Puns aren't funny. I'll be the first one to admit my well of puns is getting pretty bone dry. <laughs> it's probably because being up here on this beam and all, my heart's not really in it. <laughs> no, stop! No, really, stop! Spaghetti! Seriously? Uh, but um, what did the penne say when he failed to recall the linguini? Spaghetti? I hardly knew her. <laughs> oh, my skull! What happened, Sans? Yeah, boss. Don't call me that. Sorry, boss. No, I'm sorry. The way I've treated you, I've been so horrible to all of you. The thing I became. No! What are you doing, bro? How can you even call me that? I'm... I'm not just a monster anymore. What I've done is monstrous. Just... just let me do it, Sans. Don't do it. You... after what I've done to you and your friends! Why... why should you care? You should be encouraging me. I'll never encourage anyone to kill themselves. Not even you, Papyrus. If anything, the underground needs you more than ever. You have to set things right. And you can. I believe in you. What is that? Another trick? I, I have no idea. This isn't my doing. It's an earthquake! Connie, it's this. We need to get out of here. All of us. Quick. Doggity, Doggeressa, help them! The 
I'm gonna fall. Hang on, Connie. Just hang on a few more seconds. This whole place is collapsing. Run for it! care. I've always cared. I've just been pretty awful at showing it. I'm so sorry, Dogami. I love you so much. It's okay, Dogarissa. I just love you too. You know that. The other dogs. I can see them around the corner there. Where's Flowey? I don't know. I haven't seen him since before Papyrus captured me. I believe you'll find your friend is nearby. It's okay, Flowey. You can come out now. P Papyrus. <laughs> it's okay, bro. Just let it out. I think he's okay now. Are you guys all right, too? I'm okay. How are you holding up, Connie? I'm alright. Sans, he actually looked after me. Kept Papyrus away for the most part. But then I'd hear him ranting about you, saying you were loyal to him now. I didn't know what to believe. I'm so sorry I didn't get you out of there sooner. What happened? I went back to the ruins to try to talk to Toriel. But she just left. She'd been killing humans and monsters to try to save them from the horror of the underground. That's awful. She didn't even listen to you. She did. At least I think so. She left a note that made me think she'd changed her mind. First Doggo, then Toriel, and now Papyrus. You really are changing the underground, Cory. But what if it wasn't me? What if it was this? It was humming down there. You had to have heard it. Didn't you? What do you think it means? It means... I was right. Look at the castle. What it can do. It's powerful. You mean dangerous? Maybe. Or maybe we'll be able to use it. I just have to figure out how to... Yeah, why won't it open? If it's so powerful, do you think you should be trying to force it open? What if it's stuck? What if it's never going to open? What if it could help us, but can't because we just can't get it? Mm. It helped at the exact right time. Maybe that's enough. Corey, can I talk to you for a minute? Will you guys be all right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you for everything you've done. My brother, he's different now. Is he who he used to be? No, and maybe he will never be again. But he's not the murderer, the monster anymore. And that's something to be grateful for. He's lucky to have a brother who cares about him so much. I'm glad to hear you say that. Because that's what I need to talk to you about. He's not the monster that he used to be. The one Undyne will be expecting to fight. The Snowden K-9 unit either. Isn't that a good thing? In some ways. But Undyne knows Papyrus was coming. She would have seen him building his war machines. And destroying Alphys' cameras was a clear signal. She'll be expecting an attack. Alphys, you're the second person to mention her. Corey, listen to me. Undyne is a fearsome warrior and she's easily provoked. She won't sit around waiting for Papyrus. By now, she's probably raised an army. She'll be here tomorrow unless we do something. Guessing you have a suggestion? Hunt the hunter, in a manner. If she's expecting to have the upper hand and meet Papyrus on the way here, outflank her. You have to talk to her, the way you did to Doggo and Toriel and Papyrus. But we'd have to travel more than twice the distance of Undyne in the same amount of time, and she'll have Alphys with her. How am I supposed to have a heart-to-heart -heart with both a warrior and her mad scientist girlfriend? There's more than one way to be strong. Some folks throw their energy into physical things to avoid their emotions. You mean they're having... domestic problems? You can almost hear them here, in Snowden Village. Alphys is especially <clears throat> sharp, 
to Undyne. She's mean to her? Like most monsters down here, Cory. They've forgotten who they really are. But how? How can you be one person one day and someone else the next? It doesn't happen overnight. It happens in bits and pieces. Love fades and cools. It turns to tolerance and irritation. Things that once seemed so small can stir up a fight. That's how it begins. I don't imagine Undyne's going to be in any way thrilled about opening up to me. I'd be lying if I said this was going to be easy. And can I trust you now? That's something you'll always have to decide for yourself, Corey. We all have to be responsible for who we put our faith in. Is there a reason you're always so cryptic? Or do you just enjoy it? Black and white are rarities in this world. Whether you're on the surface or in the underground, everything's always gray. Whoa! 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 What's happening? What is this thing? It's a choice. One you're going to have to make, sooner now than ever. A choice? Even if I tried to explain it to you now, it wouldn't make sense. You're not ready. What I can tell you is that it has to do with why you're here. I fell down from Mount Ebbett. And lost your memories. Don't you think that was a bit strange? Are you saying they were stolen? Or repressed. The underground is a place of magic, Cory. And whatever's made you forget who you are is a part of it. That locket can't open until the right time. The damage it could cause, I don't even want to think about. Do you trust me enough to believe you? I don't know. That's good. Think carefully, because that caution and awareness will serve you well in the future. There's no way around confronting Undyne, is there? I'm sorry. When do I leave? More like, when do we leave? You guys can't come with me. Connie, we barely survived everything back there in the castle. And Flowey, you've nearly been fireballed and had your petals torn off. We want to help you, Cory. And if that means risking danger, we've done it before. We can do it again. What did I do to deserve this? You're trying to help us, Cory. We can't abandon you now. You're so selfless. And that's the reason you're going to be able to stop Undyne. How can we face both her and Alphys? Alphys won't be planning to be beside Undyne in battle. She'll be someplace safe. Probably her lab in Hotland. That's good. Cory, you'll only have a brief window of time to get through to Undyne. Hopefully, Alphys will be too distracted with her own preparations to notice. What do we do to prepare? There's nothing we can do to prepare. I can get you there, but the rest is up to you. Wow, no pressure. I'm so sorry this has to be you, Cory. Just keep the locket close, keep your friends closer, and do try your best. That's all anyone can do. Doggo, we have to get him. He'll be scared. I'll ask Greater Dog and Lesser Dog to check in on him. I checked on him before coming back here. He was okay. I think he'll be really happy to see his dog friends again. Especially now that they don't want to tear him to pieces. I guess that's true. You too sure I can't dissuade you from coming with me? Not after coming this far. I just feel bad asking you to risk so much. You didn't ask us to come with you. We volunteered. Thank you. Seriously. You don't know how much it means to me that I don't have to do this on my own. As soon as you're ready. If you two are, let's go. Is that? It's my dirty sock. Don't ask. So, do I just hang on to it, or...? Just give it a minute. Okay, cuz... Where are we? You're the Timmy Village, I think. Timmy's? Let's hope we don't meet any of them. If Undyne recruited them for her army, they tear us to shreds. What are they? Tiny, yippy little fighters. Got sharp teeth on them. Flowey's right. They're best avoided. You stupid locket. Why won't it open? Tama! What the? Food? What does it want? It's trying to ask for food. Oh. Uh, sorry, we don't have any food. Tommy's gone! Uh, ah, stay away from me! What's that you got there, Timmy? Oh, no. Looks like a bunch of spies, if you ask me, Tim. We're not spies! You telling me Papyrus didn't send you a scout ahead? Sure, and I was born yesterday. You have my word, we're not scouts. Oh, yeah? 
What's that in your hand then? Looks like some kind of scouting thing to me. You have to give that back. It's really important. Give that back? It's really important. Give me one reason why I shouldn't kill you right here. We really, really, really don't want to die. Not good enough. We surrender, okay? Check us for weapons if you want. You won't find anything. We just want to talk to Undyne. Well, uh... Isn't that a good enough reason? I guess so. But if you give Commander Undyne any lip, I'll bring you to your knees in a second. Get it? We won't treat her with anything but respect. Fine. But you're staying ahead of me. The whole way. Undyne's house. Looks like their headquarters. Shouldn't you have, I don't know, blindfolded us or something so we wouldn't be able to find our way back here? Why are you assuming we're gonna let you leave? Corey? Yeah, Flowey? I'm kind of regretting not taking you up on that offer. That's okay, I know the feeling. Keep moving. You wanted to see Commander Undyne, now get in there. Would you just shut up? That's no way to address my soldiers, Weed. Sentry, why are you wasting my time with this pathetic band of miscreants? They, uh, surrendered, Commander Undyne. They, uh, they asked to see you. So you just brought them here. What kind of cloth-eared lout are you? I'm so sorry, Commander. That's latrine duty for you, soldier. Now get these dratted things out of my sight. Wait, please. I just need a minute of your time, Commander Anton. Don't you understand what you saw outside? This is war, not some child's game. But if you just listen... Offensive pup! How dare you speak out of turn! It's just this sort of detestable rabble that's causing all this trouble in the underground. Outside, you three. Belay that! Sir? There's time enough before we depart for me to teach this whelp a lesson. One he'll never forget for the rest of his miserable life. Give him your sword. Now! Pick it up, boy. Corey, you have to do it. No, I won't fight you. I don't want to hurt anyone. If you don't pick that sword up, I will gut you, so help me. Corey, you have to fight! No! 